Hey, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this week's Chalk Talk is a 12 lead, but we're concentrating mostly on the rhythm. Well, the first thing that should pop off the page at you is the fact that there are these big giant spikes in front of each QRS complex. These are pacemaker spikes. You can see them in front of every beat, and you can see that the QRS starts immediately after this spike, and so this looks like a ventricular pacemaker. But unfortunately, what happens is a lot of times ECG readers will look at this and just call it a ventricular paced rhythm, and then they'll go on to the next tracing. But anytime you see a ventricular pacemaker, you have to ask two questions. Is it a single or a dual chamber pacemaker? And what are the atria doing? So in order to answer that question, you really have to start looking for P waves. Now, as you look down here in the rhythm strip here, this is lead two, you kind of look across real quickly, and all of a sudden you see this big giant bump right there. That sure looks like a P wave, doesn't it? But it looks like it's the only one that kind of looks that way. But remember, the best place to look for P waves is often lead V1. And if you look in the same spot before each ventricular spike, it looks like that there could be a P wave in front of each QRS complex. But the P wave morphology seems to vary a little bit. Sometimes it's a little larger. Sometimes it looks more flat. In this case, it looks quite a bit bigger. And you kind of have to think, could this be a dual chamber pacemaker tracking those Ps? Because remember, dual chamber pacemakers are capable of four different behaviors, right? You can have atrial pacing with normal AV conduction. You can have AV pacing where both chambers have spikes in front of them. You can have inhibited where the sinus node is normal, the AV conduction is normal, and so both chambers of the pacemaker are inhibited, so you have no spikes at all. And finally, you can have atrial synchronous ventricular pacing, where each P wave results in a ventricular spike synchronized with the atrial rate to kind of reconnect the A and the V in a patient who, for example, has complete heart block. I mean, someone with complete heart block will usually receive a dual chamber pacemaker, and that atrial synchronous ventricular pacing is the most common behavior that you'll see. So you have to convince yourself that these P waves are occurring consistently in front of the ventricular spike and that they're not just sort of like coincidentally sitting there, right? So if you take a pair of calipers, you can do one of two things. You can look at the beginning of the P wave and measure to the ventricular spike and see if that relationship appears to be consistent. And, you know, sometimes it is consistent. But here, for example, the P waves seem to occur later than usual. And, you know, there is something called isorhythmic AV dissociation. That's an advanced topic where, let's say your sinus rate is going at the same rate as the pacemaker and the P waves just happen to be in front of the QRS complexes, but they're not really related to each other. Now that can happen. I have plenty of tracings to show that. But in that case, what you're assuming is that this is just a single chamber of ventricular pacemaker, VVI pacemaker, that's pacing in the ventricle, is sensing in the ventricle, and it's not seeing the P waves. If that was the case, then the ventricular pacing spikes should be absolutely perfectly regular because after all, pacemakers are like a clock. And so you should see absolutely no variation in the spike to spike interval. So let's take our calipers again and see if that's the case. This time we're gonna put the calipers on two spikes in a row. And then, so let's move the calipers over and see if the spikes are perfectly regular. Well, look at that. That one comes a little bit later. And let's see, that one comes on time. This one comes on time, but that one's clearly later. So the spike to spike interval is not constant. You have variability in the spike to spike interval and that variability tells you that the pacemaker is being triggered off of these P waves. So essentially, you've just proven that this is a dual chamber pacemaker, DDD, and it seems to be tracking the P waves. Well, the one thing that kind of sticks out is why should the AV interval from the beginning of the P wave to the ventricular spike be so long? It's about 300 milliseconds. And that's kind of non-physiologic, but that depends on how the pacemaker is programmed. Any pacemaker will have a lower rate limit. That's the rate that the pacemaker operates at. 
but dual chamber pacemakers also have a programmable AV delay, and that determines how long after a P wave does the ventricular spike come out. So it would appear that this pacemaker happens to have a relatively long programmed AV delay, and that's okay, except it may not be optimal from the patient's hemodynamic standpoint, because remember, the P waves represent atrial contraction, and when the atria contract, it pushes the blood through the AV valves to fill up the ventricle, but you'd like to have the ventricular contraction very shortly after that. I mean, after all, the normal PR interval is maybe 150 to 200 milliseconds. That's sort of optimal timing for that blood to fill up the ventricle and then the ventricles immediately contract. Here, you've got a little bit more time than that, so sometimes the filling of the ventricles may not be totally optimal. So you might want to just reprogram this pacemaker's AV delay to a shorter number. But otherwise, this looks like a normally functioning dual chamber pacemaker that's exhibiting atrial synchronous ventricular pacing. Okay, so I hope you can take these ideas and use them next time you see ventricular pacing spikes on a cardiogram, because it'll help you figure out whether the pacemaker is functioning normally or not. So until next time, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.